Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video we're going to make our first CIS 195 web page, and we're also going to test out our live server on VS Code. So let's see how this works. What you're going to be doing here is creating a web page. So that means we're going to need our editor. Uh, my editor is VS Code. I've already got it installed. So I'm going to go ahead and load it up. Now it is defaulting to my working folder for 195 because that's what I had open last. Don't forget in a previous activity I created this CIS 195 Spring 21 folder and it's got an images subfolder and a style subfolder. So it's important that we have that and I know how to access it and I know where to access it from. So I've got that folder ready. Now if in VS Code if I don't have my folder open I need to go to File, Open Folder and I need to find my working folder. There we go, and I'll see it right up here. I can see that I've got my folder, I can see that I've got my files. I'm ready to create a new web page. I'm just going to double click a new blank tab here, and that's going to give me a blank, uh, a blank file. Before I do anything, I'm going to go ahead and take a moment to File, Save As. I'm going to save this into my working folder right here in the main part of the working folder, not in one of the subfolders. And I'm going to call this file index.html. It's important that I call it that. Index, all lowercase, no spaces, dot .html. Give it the HTML extension. This is going to be our main home page for our web dev space. So index.html. I'm going to save that. So I've got this file, and I'm going to press Control plus on my keyboard to zoom in. Obviously, you don't necessarily need to do that on your view. Under View, Appearance, I could uh, uncheck the, sh the sidebar. Notice that's Control B, so I could just click that and it goes away. I'm still in my folder. That's a good sign. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to start off with a doc type definition. Now, when I see this little prompt on VS Code, I could press my Tab key and it's going to autofill a bunch of stuff for me, but I'm not going to do that. And I don't want you to do it either. I'm not going to know if you do or don't. However, I do think it's important especially early on, and early on could be in the first four to five, six weeks, is type things over and over again. Repetition is going to be good for you. The more you type something, the more you're going to develop that muscle memory for what you should type, and the more you're going to be able to spot mistakes and things like that. So type things over and over again. Every week, in fact, every other day, you should be making a new web page, even if it's super simple and super plain, but type that stuff over and over again. This is my doc type definition, and I need to put in HTML in there as well. So this is basically telling the browser which version of markup language we're using. We're using HTML5. Technically, we're using a sub-variety of HTML5, 5.3, I believe, but HTML5 is good. And this is the doc type definition, which we're going to have at the top of every one of our web pages. Also, a quiz question that you might see coming up. OK, right after that, particular tag. I'm going to type an opening HTML tag. So that's angle bracket HTML space and then I'm going to write LANG for language equals quotation um, EN dash US. And then that automatically puts in my closing HTML tag. I'll press my enter key a few times just to knock that down. So this is the HTML tag, which tells the browser that we're starting our web page document. The closing HTML tag says we're stopping our web page document. We're starting it on line two. I'm stopping it right now on line nine, but that's going to, of course, change very, very quickly. OK, a attribute modifies the tag. So this is the language attribute inside of the HTML tag, which is telling the browser that we're going to be typing in US English as opposed to uh, British English. I can't remember what the, uh, the value for that is or some other language. OK, now that I've got that, right after that, I'm going to type in an opening head tag. Types in my closing head tag for me. I'll press my enter key a little bit. So this is the start of the head section of my web page. Right after that closing head tag, I'm going to write in a body tag. And then I'm going to get rid of the space in between the closing body and the closing HTML. So you hear me using these terms, opening tag, closing tag. So the closing tag usually has that slash in there almost all the time. So the opening head tag is right there on my line 3. The closing head tag is on my line 7. The opening body tag 
is on my line 8. The closing body tag is on my line 10. The line numbers aren't too critical, but the sequence of these is important. And then at the very end of my page is the closing HTML tag. That's still true, and that stays the same. Okay, we're doing great. Now, the head section of our page is going to contain information about our page that is not necessarily directly displayed on the web page. The one tag we're going to do right now is going to be the title. And this is going to be my CIS 195 homepage spring 2021. Perfect. That's going to be the title of my page. I'm not going to see this on my web page, but it is going to be in the tab. Or if I were to bookmark this page, it would show up as the bookmark text, the default bookmark text. Great. So that's the only thing I'm going to put in the head section for right now. We'll put other stuff in there soon, but not but not in this particular video. In the body section, I'm going to do something similar but different. I'm going to use an H1 tag, which stands for heading one or headline one. And I'm going to do you know, kind of the same kind of thing here. However, let's see, maybe I will mix it up a little bit. No, 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 I'll do this. CIS 195 homepage. And then I'm going to do the pipe symbol, shift backspace. And then I'm going to do a span tag. It's OK if you don't know what that is. And I'll write spring 2021. OK. So I've got a heading one tag. And then I've got the text for our class, CIS 195 homepage, and a little pipe symbol in there. Slash would work, or a hyphen would work. And then I've got a span tag, spring 2021, closing span tag, and closing headline one tag, heading one tag. This is good nesting. My span element is within my heading one element. Cool. Right after that, I'm going to do a paragraph, and I want you to type in your name. I'll type in my name, but I want you to type your name there in that paragraph. That's pretty good. This is a great first page. Now, the other thing that I've got going on here, under my file menu, I've got autosave check. That's a great feature, by the way. If you don't have autosave check, then you're going to have to be pressing the Control S button quite a lot. So go ahead and turn on autosave. Pretty darn useful most of the time. So autosave is checked. If not, save. And we want to keep saving this over and over again. Index.html. Now, in the lower right corner of your VS Code, you should have this option to go live. If you don't see this go live option, you need to make sure that you have the live server extension installed on VS Code. You need to make sure that you've done a, a select folder and you've opened your working folder. And if you still don't see it, you might need to close VS Code and then reopen it just to see if it's on there. Once I can see that go live option, I'm going to click that. And it's going to load up my web page in my default browser. So Brave is my default browser. And here's my web page right up there. Notice this web address. OK, so this is showing that I'm treating my computer kind of like a web server. And I'm looking at my web page right on there. And what's nice about this is I can make changes right on here. In fact, I let's see, what if this is my CIS 195 web development? I make a change. I've got the autosave on, so that's pretty nice. So then I can head back over to my browser, and look at that. It's auto-updating right there. So now I can see that I've got that web development. So that's pretty good. So that's all we're going to do right now for this first participation activity. However, if you're in the CIS 195 class, stick around for a little bit, because I want to make sure you know what you need to turn in in order to get your first uh, points for week one. Take care.